Blog Talk Radio. Namaste, everyone. Hi, this is Tandy Devi from KarmaCafe.com, and welcome to our show today. Our guest is Prism, who has been here with us some um, before, and he was widely received. So we're we're going to be having him back every month on a regular basis. It'll be the second Wednesday of every month. Now, Prism um, is just you know a normal person. <laughs> A consciousness clothed in flesh. He doesn't claim knowledge of the writings or activities of any ancient lineage or sacred text, but he does claim the information received as it was gifted to him by the expanded awareness of the awakened Kundalini. And Kundalini can do all that and even more. Um, Kundalini is expressed through prism as a teacher. And what he brings to us is his own experience, which is which validates the teachings um, of the masters, and he's able to perceive uh, knowledge and information through his kundalini. He has done this for over 20 years, and he has been guided to teach those who are gifted or guided to receive it. Now. Let it be a point of discernment if what is given from him feels appropriate for you. He comes from a place of disciplined love and disciplined intention within the parameters of forgiveness, spiritual balance, service to others, and spiritual evolution. And today we're going to talk about uh, Kundalini awakening and Tantra. Now, this might, what we have to say may ruffle some feathers, but we are here to present Tantra in a light that's not, um, generally we don't consider it to be a spiritual path, but it is a very high path. And in fact, Tantra means liberation through expansion. And also on the line is um, my partner, Ram, J. Ram, and Prism as well. Hi, guys. Hello, Hi. hello. Hello. <laughs> so here we are again, and this topic of Tantra is very, um, very interesting because it's been misrepresented, misrepresented as a path by so many people, and they have deliberately used it to uh, to enhance, I guess, their own belief system. And, and their sex it, life. Exactly, and especially where it concerns the sex life. And what we want to say is that uh, Tantra is not sex therapy. It is not swinging or pornography. It is not sex partners or sex parties, rather. Instead, it, it is a devotional path, and well, it, it will, uh, it will, it will stimulate a uh, a greater appreciation of the of the sexual aspects of a person. You know, if mm-hmm. you're practicing tantra, uh, that will occur regardless. But to go into it, I feel for that reason, is kind of short circuiting a, a much larger process. Right. So for here in Northern California, there are a lot of groups uh, who hold regularly hold pujas, which which is a, a gathering of people to practice uh, their interpretation of tantra, you know, in a group <laughs> format. And a lot of this is uh, kind of an uh, Shall we say uh, it involves a lot of partner swapping and and uh, not a lot of guru guidance, and yet there is some. And mm-hmm. you know a lot of you know pro polyamorous uh, interactions, and and to those who practice polyamory, that's fine. It's you know it's it's not uh, certainly not. I'm not making any kind of a judgment against polyamory. No. My my only issue is to call it. Tantra means something different. 
Exactly. And, uh, you know, Tantra is more than just sex. Right. Uh, uh, you know, but it is, it does involve sex. But sex in a much wider uh, format than right. than what people understand or, or, or are aware of. Uh, having sex with the eyes and nature. Looking at a flower is interacting with that flower on an energetic level, and in a sense, in a tantra sense, you could be having sex with that flower. Mm-hmm. Okay, and seeing the the divine in creation. You know, whether it's a flower or a rock or a beautiful sunset, another person, yeah. an animal. Mm-hmm. You know, tantra is in my opinion and my take on Tantra is it is interaction in real time with the divine. And it's basically sparking on the two different polarities of, of the creative uh, mix, the, the positive and the negative from an electrical standpoint, mm-hmm. the male and the female from a human, humani, humanity standpoint. <laughs> so as we explore the interrelationships between those two polarities and in a devotional manner, this, to me, is far more a Tantra approach than merely going and and having sex with different people and, yeah. and, and, you know, supplanting the word Tantra for something that is maybe not quite so spiritual. Maybe not quite so devotional. Mm-hmm. Not saying, you know, we're certainly, you know, I'm certainly not saying that uh, that the people who interpret Tantra in their own way are incorrect. Uh, you know, I'm just saying that uh, the way I see Tantra, I guess my interpretation of Tantra, is that it is far more of a devotional, spiritual, emotional process mm-hmm. than it is simply just two different genders coming together and and working towards a spiritual expression. Right. It's so much broader than than just two people. It's huge. But uh, let's let's talk about Kundalini. Yes. I I look at at Tantra through the context of Kundalini. And my understanding that has been given to me through the Kundalini, is that Tantra is basically a very high and strong path, as you mentioned, Shandi, towards the awakening of the Kundalini. That is why it exists. As you said, it is not. It doesn't exist uh, from its from its source as a sexual tool, or mm-hmm. as a sexual therapy, or as a a a group. Uh, uh, interaction, you know, with other members of a group regarding the, the sexual enjoyments or pleasures. Mm-hmm. It is towards enlightenment. Right. Tantra is a path to enlightenment. To enlightenment, yes. And it, you know, granted, I mean, way, way, way back, thousands of years ago, when the original split, at least among the Sanskrit peoples, occurred, Uh, You had one group of that society who wanted to practice what we understand today as it would be the the more, the the less sexual and the more meditational, the more yogic form of practice uh, towards the awakening of the Kundalini. And this is a, this is a very good practice. It is a, is a viable practice and it will work. The other part of their society wanted to to explore the sensuous, the uh, divinity through sensuousness, and so mm-hmm. they they went the completely opposite direction. Okay, the opposite of the conservative, you know, caste based, priest based, priestess based type of scenario, and they went straight into the expressions of sexuality, the expressions of emotional with sexuality, the expressions of of uh eating and and the expressions of of uh, certain doctrines of 
of devotion based upon the sensuousness. And this is also a, a, a very viable path. In our society, which is quite different from the Sanskriti people, uh, in, our, in the Western society, we don't even recognize uh, Kundalini. We don't even, you know, you know, by the far majority, we don't even recognize its existence. Go to a doctor and say, "Yeah, I'm having Kundalini syndrome," and he'll be on the <laughs> internet googling Kundalini. You know, he'll have a hard time. You know, and so, so in our society, we're just a little bit less balanced. Uh, than some of the other societies in the ancient past with regards to the Kundalini. Uh, Tantra is an, ex- is an extremely effective path towards Kundalini, and yet it also has some, some pretty uh, easy-to-discern uh, distractions yeah. from walking the path. For instance, you can get wrapped up into the whole sexual aspect of it, and you can... You know, if you have, you know, your your sex drive is very, very strong, and it's coloring almost everything that you do. <laughs> you're going to to kind of get distracted off of a path towards devotion, mm-hmm. towards awakening of the Kundalini. And I, you know, I have not experienced tantra outside of the Kundalini. So, so for me, it is all about seeking enlightenment, seeking the awakening of the Kundalini, which which for me has been the doorway into enlightenment. And as people practice the Tantra in this way, it, it can be very, very powerful. I've had students uh, have arms and legs go out of phase. And what I mean by that, their arms or legs will just disappear. They'll be using their arm or their leg or hand or foot or whatever, and all of a sudden it's gone. They're looking through clear air right at the, 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 the ground where their arm or their leg used to be. Uh-huh. And, you know, most of them, when they have this happen, you know, they panic. But all you have to do is just shake the arm where you, where you, where you felt your arm to be. You just shake it, and it'll come right back into phase. But this is the power yeah. of a tantric kundalini awakening. It is very strong. And it will come with all the all the bells and whistles, and I r- literally mean bells and whistles, more flutes than whistles. But <laughs> you'll hear the gongs, and and you'll you'll hear chanting. Uh, you know, depending on your proclivity, <laughs> depending upon your karma, as you come into it, will determine what type of phenomena is associated with your awakening. So Kundalini is a very very uh, tangible connection to your divinity at the base of the spine and your tailbone at the last three vertebrae of the tailbone mm-hmm. certain certain uh, vibrational mixtures of energy that can occur through tantra it can occur through meditation it can occur through yoga you know it can occur through various exercises uh, will stimulate a vibratory effect upon this and it will open you know the the doorway, so to speak, of the shakti, and allow the shakti access to the spine. As the shakti flows up the spine, it awakens each of the the neural plexus centers, commonly known as chakras. And as those chakras are awakened, they are opened up like a flower, and it goes all the way up your spine until the top of your head, which would be the largest flower, the biggest flower, the thousand petaled lotus. Mm-hmm. as uh, it is referred to, and uh, that will open up, and uh, that is when you really begin to feel the effects of, of awakened kundalini and enlightenment. Yes, and that's why it's so important to do some practices, and as you put it, the safeties. Right, right. You have the tongue up right behind the upper front teeth, that fleshy mound right behind the upper front mm-hmm. teeth, the eyes up, meaning that your eyes go up and then slightly inward to the brow, to the bridge of your nose, and your fingers, your thumb tip and your four fingertips uh, close together with your other fingers spread out. You can tilt your, t- your chin slightly towards your chest to stretch out the spine. You know, these are, these are also called 
I, I call them locks because, mm-hmm. you know, the, that's what Banda means in the Sanskrit mm-hmm. language. Or at least that's a close approximation to what it means. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, these locks are helpful for a, an unblocked flow of the Kundalini. Not to say that you won't have any blocks if you do these, but you will have less blocks if you mm-hmm. do these. We all come into the equation, especially in the West, with certain blockages, uh, typically of the emotional body and the ego body, mm-hmm. sometimes of the physical body too. If, uh, if great injury has been incurred upon the physical body, well then that can, uh, that can form a blockage as well. Yeah, so tantra. I, tantra and kundalini go hand in hand, yeah. but it really must be discerned, uh, in my opinion, away from uh, prurient sexual activities. It is not pornography. It is not a quick way to get uh, a sexual contact. It is not a way to to prove your your dominance, either male or female, over another person. It is not a way to spice up a 10-year-old marriage whose sexual activities may have been waning or the sexual yes. interest may have been mm-hmm. waning. You know, it is not a way to do these things. I mean, it, those things can be done, but they right. are distractions from what can be done towards mm-hmm. enlightenment. You know, we're not and judging. If, right, and if you just do it on a weekend, um, you know, it might feel wonderful during that time, but when you get home, then things all back to normal again. There is kind of a, a waste. It's a, it's a short-circuiting of the process. In, in my opinion, and, and Shanti, I, uh, I'm going to ask you and Ram if you agree with this. Once the, the Tantra path is initiated, never again can a person go back to having, quote-unquote, a normal sexual uh, uh, ex- life experience. Mm-hmm. Once, once the, the Tantra path is initiated, that is the path from then on. Yes, okay. that's very true. It is the devotional path. It is a, a devotion expressed through physicality. Right. Okay. Uh, I, think, I think a lot of people do experience it, um, but it's, the power of it is so um, strong that they also freak out, and then they... They no back. longer want to be involved with it, you know. Yeah, you know, it is not. It is not. It is a. You know, when you when you call it a high pass, that's exactly what it is. It's a high pass, and if you're afraid of heights, then you don't want to walk it. <laughs> yeah, you don't right. want to climb that path. Uh, you know, it can be very powerful. Like I said, as you know, if a limb or a body part goes out of phase. Well, you've just looked at a, a at an energetic amputation right in front of you, and and that can scare people to pieces. Yes, <laughs> it hasn't occurred. You know, they haven't been amputated, but the visual of that occurring is what can be scary. Like I said, all you do is shake the arm or the leg, and it comes right back into view. Mm-hmm. But you know, if you don't know that, yeah, you know, right. <laughs> Well, like you're on the phone trying to call 911 with an appendage that used to be there. <laughs> it comes back when you dial the phone. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I'd like to add something there, uh, Chris. I mean, it seems that Tantra leaves you naked emotionally, and uh, it strips away the ego experience. And a lot of people are really afraid of that. They feel... Their egos are afraid of that. Their the ego... Egos yeah, the ego is a is a is a self replenishing uh, entity. <laughs> yeah, it is. It doesn't it, want to be stripped away. They get <laughs> they get scared because it's too authentic and it's too uh, it's too naked. You know, you're, you're stripped bare. So unless you're willing to surrender uh, to that experience then it, it becomes more of a frightening experience to... Uh... Well, it can be. It can be frightening. Of course, you know, the, you, you know, you can have people out there going, well, you know, I just had the most tremendous orgasm I've ever had in my life by practicing mm-hmm. Tantra. Mm-hmm. And I didn't have to surrender. I didn't have to do anything. I just had to sit on my partner in a special way and move in a special way. And this gave me that. 
and I think they'll be absolutely correct. You cannot, you know, I, I can't say, oh, no, that didn't happen, and or, or I can't throw a judgment on it saying, oh, no, that was wrong. No. Mm -hmm. But that that is an example of the joys that can come with this path as well. The, everything is just a bit more severe. The, the pleasures are more severe. The falls are more severe. The fear That's right. is more severe. The, the surrender, as, as Ram just mentioned, is more severe. You have to give up more and surrender more in order to have the space that you vacated by that surrendering filled in with more. But once you have that experience, you're quite right. Then ordinary uh, ego sex just will not uh, be adequate any longer. So when, when, you, when you when you have been able to to uh, free yourself of ego control to that degree, you find that your whole personality changes. Not the core you. The core you, yes, has changed, but you're still you. You're still the individual that you are. But your behavior is completely different, and your feelings about uh, your behavior and other people's behavior uh, inter interrelating with you is different. You, you are more you, free. In, you're in, more free and authentic. You and tend authentic. to be. Yes. You're, you, you find your authentic self rather than trying to live in behind a mask or behind some role or behind some uh, artificial construct that your ego or your persona has uh, so cleverly devised, all of a sudden you're naked and uh, you're authentic. It's like being born again. <laughs> literally, literally. An infant is one of the most authentic persons on, a planet, on, on the planet. And I do believe that as you approach divinity, you know, it is best to approach divinity uh, from a very authentic uh, mm -hmm. attitude and expression. And Tantra can get you there. Tantra can get you there. But it is, you know, it is not merely a sexual expression. Sexual expression is part of the process. Mm -hmm. But so is, is you know, all, all pleasure taken from all the five senses. Not just the, you know, the the first two chakras, not the first mm -hmm. two energy centers on the body. And I and and for those who are not familiar with the, these energy centers, uh, along the spine there there are six nerve plexus centers. It's where the nerves come together on the spine, and uh, they reflect specific aptitudes, abilities, and phenomena. The Sanskrit word for these nerve plexus centers are chakras, and uh, these chakras, you know, so for instance, your heart chakra will deal with emotion, your throat chakra will deal with with uh, communication. I'm just, you know, these are broad, mm -hmm. um, broad uh, explanations. The top of the head would be uh, the end of the of the chakra system. Uh, the, it's the largest chakra, or at least the, the most connected to the divine. And uh, the, the ancient peoples called it, in, in, the, in the Hindu, the ancient Hindu called it the thousand-petaled lotus. The first chakra is at the base of the spine, as I mentioned before, at the tailbone. And uh, it, it houses the, sh the shakti, or the kundalini. So when we speak of chakras, we're speaking of the nerve plexus centers that... Uh, that are up the spine. Tantra, when you when you have Tantra with another person or you're having, say, Tantric uh, interactions with another person, in, in a very real way, you are connecting consciously with the chakra bodies of the other person. In, in, in some expressions, yeah. the actual bodies are connected either through touching or through a very, very short distance from each other, the actual chakra system of each person. And so, in a way, a blending occurs. Kundalini yeah. occurs when the sacred male and the sacred female mm -hmm. uh, marry or bond. Mm -hmm. And just like uh, an electrical circuit, when the positive meets the negative, the, 
the, the, the flow of electricity is actuated. Well, very similar with the Kundalini. When a specific frequency of the male is met with a specific frequency of the female, the Kundalini Shakti can arise in either one or both of them. Okay. It is best to be prepared for this. It is best to go into the tantric path with the knowledge that as you walk that path, you may activate your kundalini. And so you need to know what what the effects of a kundalini awakening in, in that format can can give to you. And I just gave you one of the phenomena of the uh, disappearing limbs. And, of course, mm-hmm. all of the awakening attributes of the kundalini will occur, not just you know a, a limb going out of phase. That's just one of, of a thousand yeah. different... Uh, phenomena that can occur. Uh, it is typically the most beautiful experience that a person can have. Yeah. You know, it if is, I, if it is could, why Tantra is even there. Mm-hmm. Tantra I, is the path towards this. Yeah. Uh, this, the sharing of the, the chakra bodies is when two couples have practice long enough and are able to openly open up the chakra centers, uh, then you have a, a joining of these different emotional, physical, uh, karmic bodies that uh, it, it'll, it allows a, a progressively higher and higher state of, of uh Awakening and of sharing, so uh, it it tantra allows you to take ordinary sex, which is just on a physical pleasure level, all the way up through the chakra system to where you become this this divine. Uh, it, it becomes a divine experience, not uh, so. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It, it, it will. Part, it serves as the platform for. Part, you can join, you know, uh, the sexual chakras. You can join the third chakra, the fourth chakra. You, you can feel this resonance all the way up through your body as well as your partner's body. And uh, that's the, the ecstatic component to, to Tantra. It, it takes some practice and some work. Uh, individually and collectively, in order to have this sort of divine experience, but it's 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 definitely uh, uh, worth the you know worth the effort. It is. It is worth the effort, and it is also worth the change that occurs to a person as they walk through that process. As you mentioned earlier, Ron, uh, the person will go through changes. And in my opinion, these are evolutionary changes. As you surrender uh, your ego and your, your, to a degree, your will to the process, the process will carry you into each uh, chakra, and you will surrender inside of each chakra. A lot of people who are not familiar with uh, Tantra may be wondering, well, let's just get right to the sex. Let's, you know. Mm-hmm. Skip all this spiritual stuff. I just want to know about the sex. <laughs> <laughs> so, the simplest answer to that is just become the non-doer and just experience the the process. And if you're the non-doer in sex and you're just experiencing the process, then then you know you're you're approaching it the correct way. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, I agree. I agree, absolutely. You know, as, as you take your your uh, your desire your desire to actively to control, to control, control. yeah. If you're if you're not controlling it, and you're allowing it to control you. Then I think you're you're going to go a lot quicker. Uh, but I do feel that for those who are not familiar with with tantra at all. Mm-hmm. All they know of is it's a sex thing, and and okay, I'm interested. You know, they may say, okay, I'm interested in the spiritual aspect, but it's still a sex thing. And tell me about sex. 
-hmm. So I'm going to to give one position out that for those who are experienced with Tantra will completely understand, and that would be called Mayathuna. Are you familiar with that, Shandi? Yes. The sure. Mayathuna uh, involves the man sitting upright, legs crossed, and the woman typically sitting uh, with her legs around the man and uh, the insertion being made in that position. And mm -hmm. from that position, the man does not move. Only the woman moves. She, He is the platform. She is the dancer upon the platform. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how you start. That's the position you start from. Your emotional position is that of love. Love for this person. Love for this woman. Love for this man. Love for God, or c however you see the divine creator to be. Love, love, love is one of the, is, is the most important primary aspect. And then from that love, you can branch out into respect and, and ceremonies based upon that respect. Uh, the desire to join with that person in a sacred embrace that will walk you up the chakra ladder and into the divine expression at the top of the head. And as Ram suggested, it will take practice. Mm -hmm. It will take practice and it will take devotion. Devotion uh, as, as understood as a discipline, you know, uh, as a way of pursuing a path every single time. Uh, the sexual expression is reached for that path is being walked. It is n you're never looking behind you and going, oh, well, I think I want to go back here. You're always looking forward. You're always surrendering more and more. And when I mean surrendering, this means giving up the virtues of your ego, the comfort of the ego. And you know, a person may wonder, oh, how do I give the ego up? That's that's impossible. It's, it's, it's so. What you do is you change your behavior. You change your behavior from possession of another person to acceptance of another person as they are, how they are, where they are, when they are. You change your behavior towards love as, as something that is a requirement. It needs to be a gift a gift that divinity has given us to experience. Love as a form of devotion, devotion towards that person that you're with in a complete sense. As you as, as you sit together in Mayathuna and you and you're breathing each other's air and you're touching each other's skin and and you're going into the path of Tantra. Devotion is extremely important. Devotion towards yourself mm -hmm. and the other person's self and the mingling of the two selves that equal one self. Once again, we run into the two that are one mm -hmm. and the one that is two. When people are sitting in Mayathuna, they can become one person, one living organism, as an example of the divine male and female, the corporeal male and female, can begin to bring themselves into the exalted process of oneness with each other. And this will open the Kundalini. This is the frequency that I spoke of earlier. Yeah. And it's also really important to be, um, to use, well, to, to select your partner um, with, with great care because these energies are so potent that, you know, you don't want to be mingling um, kind of haphazardly just energies from anyone. Yeah, I, I, would, I would agree with that. You know, if you're meeting them at McDonald's, you know, it, it's <laughs> no seriously though. If you'll feel 
you will feel the appropriate person for you. And you, I think you want to distinguish from your lust for a person. Right. Uh, you know, you don't want to feel that your lust, your desire to be with a, a certain man or woman is the indicator choice for a person that would resonate the best with you because you don't know that much you know if you're looking at the body mm-hmm. you're not you're not seeing all that there is to be seen okay the personality mm-hmm. the mannerisms the mentality the the belief system mm-hmm. all of that can be very very incompatible with you and yet the body you know that person can have a dynamite body and and your body you know hormonally will just be going you know, 100 miles an hour towards that person. Take a step back. Here's another ego, tr- in, you know, ego training. Instead of, of uh, responding to the egoic response of jumping on everyone that the ego wants, you mm-hmm. take a step back and you you say, <laughs> you know, you, you have a conversation and you feel the person's authenticity, you feel their honesty, you feel their truth. You feel the vibration of where they're coming from, and you may be surprised that this this person may not be the one that I want to commit tantra with. Yeah. Or yeah. on the other hand, this person may. <laughs> yeah. I, ideally, you want somebody at the same level of spiritual involvement than you are in terms of your emotional understanding in terms of your mental understanding in terms of your spiritual understanding and your all these bodies the the mental body that like you were alluding to that you connect on and the emotional body you connect on the physical body. you're not going to find people who are the same as you are well, we, you, we all have variations of, and 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 we are all not I, identical. But you can, like you say, I, I think uh, you can reach for someone who has some compatibility. There's always going to be hurdles. There's always going to be uh, challenges. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, he's going to feel one way, she's going to feel another way, and and how do we bridge that gap? There's always going to be those types of, of challenges. But but I agree. I think to the essence of, of, of what you're saying, Ron, is that, uh, you know, as compatible as you can find. Yes. You know. I mean, you, you don't want to join with somebody that's full of negative energy or negative emotions or uh, so much clouded by Maya and, dra- and drama so much that it 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 destroys the uh, the flow of the energy. So ideally, you want to be some someone that's suited in in uh, in that ideally. regard. I agree. Yeah. I, I, that 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 would be the ideal. Um, you know, that it's, it's not always the easiest thing to accomplish. But it is, you know, if you can reach towards that goal as far as you can go with it, then I think uh, it will it will be a better experience for both of you. For both. Well, sure. You you need to be mindful of it. You just can't go haphazard just because they have a nice body. And <laughs> that's right. Really in the West, that's the only criteria that people use towards mating is. You know, there's some physical attraction. Well, there's well, another line of thought that says, well, Kundalini, and I've heard this, uh, uh, you know, over and over again. They just they go, oh, Kundalini is just a sex drive. Everybody's got that, so it's no big deal. Uh, kundalini is far more than the sex drive. It's, yes, the sex drive has included the, mm-hmm. uh, as Ron was mentioning, you know, the attraction is part of the Kundalini, and it, and it is part of the the savior of the species, you know, we are attracted to those people who affect us in those ways. Mm-hmm. But for a Tantra expression, or even, you know, in, in, in the way I experience it, a Kundalini expression, 
some care needs to be given in how you choose. And, you know, you don't sample the fruit, so to speak, before you make that choice. It's better to, to you know, inquire of, of, of an individual uh, in other ways first before you, you know, you well, have sex with them or things like right. that. Because, you know, it's like, you know, every time a person has sex, a bonding is made. Every right. single time. Karma is made. Karma. A bonding is made. Yeah. Divine imprinting is accomplished. Right. Every single time a person has sex with another person. So that needs to be taken into consideration. Yeah. Uh, uh, Kundalini is the life energy. It is the, you know, the, the raw energy that, that gives us vitality in life. And well, that, that's one function of it. I, I don't see it as a single uh, expression. It is a, for me at least, it is a, it has a thousand points of, pers- of, 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 uh, of expression. Well, it is the life force. It is the sex drive. It is the enlightenment. It is the divine path. It is exalted love, exalted thinking, exalted expression. You know, yeah. it is uh, when, union with the universe, all of this. Yeah, when it rises up uh, through the chakras and awakens all the uh, the components of a person's soul. Uh, but at the first chakra... Unawakened, it's just the it's just the primal life force, and I, ideally, you want to raise that up and have this more enlightened experience with this kundalini as it moves through uh, your your mental, emotional uh, centers. And I give you an example of a bad mismatch. Let's say you're having this kundalini awakened tantric experience where your kundalini rises up to your your heart center and you feel this overwhelming love and compassion for for everyone including mankind and your partner is stuck in the second chakra and uh you you're not sharing the same experience you're sharing two different experiences True enough, true enough, but that is not a, a situation that is is a, is a failure. I feel no, that it, that situation just she, you know, the other partner is 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 being allowed to come up. It's kind of sometimes we have to be led by our partners. With tantra, it is not both people that will awaken simultaneously. Well, One person will typically lead the other. That's true, but ideally, you want you you want to be able to exchange those feelings uh, with your partner. You want to be able to feel the, the continuity, the oneness of the soul, like you were mentioning other, earlier. Uh, when you become the other person, the other person becomes you. The two become one. Well, it, that's when you, you were able to share the, the total totality of the experience yeah well, yeah I, I i i do uh, agree uh that these these are these are attributes that you do want to to be able to share uh i feel though that uh more of an example of a mismatch would be different levels of surrender uh a person may not be willing to surrender an aspect of their ego that the other person is willing to surrender and as that occurs, mm-hmm. that can definitely block a path. Oh, for sure. Uh, so you have one level of surrender and you have a different level of surrender, and those mm-hmm. two surrenders are not compatible. Bingo. You know, well, the, the path has been stopped, and now we get to look at the whole issue of surrender and, and, and uh, you know, what subjects are causing that, that uh, lack of surrender to you know, to be initiated. Why? What fears? What past experiences? What issues have have occurred in the person's life to to for, to stall? To surrender. I think it's religion. Well, religion is one, but uh, a child abuse can be another. 
Right. Okay, people who have been abused as a child, uh, sexually abused, uh, you know they have very special uh, issues that come up with regard to surrender. Okay, and a lot of people have been abused, a lot. And, uh, you know, these people, you know, they have to take a, another step and, and look back and, 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 and do as much forgiveness work as they can. Uh, their partner can also take a step back with them and say, okay, hey, this is, you know, we're not in a race here. You know, let's just take it slow. Let's take it step by step. And, uh, and I'm there for you. I can help you. I'm going to be with you. And uh, there's nothing to be concerned about. Let's work on this surrender, and I'll help you. Right. I think you have to really work on the issues of trust. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, in fact, there are a lot of there are a few um, simple exercises you could do with a partner uh, regarding trust. Remember we used to do that in class? Yes. And we taught, yeah. We, and, we, we put together a video uh, with some of these exercises and Building trust and and building building some of the uh, the practices help develop uh, a couple of the components necessary uh, for a tantric experience, and that is surrender or an ego less experience, and the other is developing a sense of mindfulness or meditation, and the oh. other is connecting with the uh, uh, the primal animal that we are and being honest about it and not hiding or uh, if you can if you can w allow those three things to happen then the tantric experience will will manifest itself well, uh, yes. before we go on oh, oh I just wanted to make a couple of announcements um, on the main page at karmasafe.com, and that's K-A-R-M-A-C-A-F-S-E.com, um, I have posted um, Chrism's article on Siddhis, and you can find um, his article there on the main page, as well as um, events coming up uh, this weekend. There's an event coming up for Ho'oponopono, with Dr. Hewlin and Mabel Katz, and that'll be at the um, Marina Del Rey Hotel in Los Angeles this weekend, actually. And also, we are working with um, we're, we're working to put something together, an, an event in Los Angeles uh, for Chrism, and it'll you know we will make that announcement as we get more details. But that is coming and. If you are interested in being on the mailing list uh, to get more information on this um, prism, can they just write to you, or do you want them to write to me? Um, they can. They can write to you or me, I guess, or Eileen okay. at uh, oh, okay. e l o r o five five at yahoo dot com, uh, and uh, and uh, Chris and Anna, and uh, and uh, I don't have. E, so it's E I L E O oh, E L O R O five five at yahoo dot com. And she can she can spread the word. Yes. Towards the other uh, organizers. I'd also like to mention your book. Uh, I think your book is really one of the best guides out there right now when it comes to tantra. Uh, From Om to Orgasm is the name of the book, and. Uh, for anybody that, that listens to anything that I might say, uh, if you're interested in Tantra, get the book. Get thank you. Get to Oregon. Well, no, I mean, thank you, you and Ron, for writing the book. It is very informative. It is very helpful. And it is a much uh, reinterpreted path, the Tantra is. And mm -hmm. uh, in some of these interpretations, there are some issues that, that are inappropriate. Uh, mm -hmm. Gurus, I feel, you know, a guru uh, targeting people for sexual conduct or, you know, because they're the guru or whatever it is. <laughs> or, uh, you know, uh, people using Tantra as a qualification on their resume when they're, uh, you know, when they're a life coach, you know, like, like 
Like, if I was a live coach, I'd be saying, hey, Shondi, you're such a cute little tantrika. <laughs> you know what? I'm, I am well-versed in the deep, deep uh, tantric expression. So <laughs> what do you say we have some chow? You know, I don't know. You know I, I've, I've oh. seen this, and I've read this so <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> you know, so it is not appropriate, in my opinion, to do these yeah. things, and yet people will do them anyway. People, you know? yes. If in any way a person is using Tantra as a way to dominate uh, mm-hmm. a, another person, this is a mistake. And some there are some consequences to these ac- actions, especially as the Kundalini comes, if it comes. Uh, there are some very severe lessons that the Kundalini will give to a person that does that. And uh, this needs to be known. The actions that you that you take upon the tantric path will come back to you in an exalted format. And when I mean exalted, the shadow can be exalted as much as the light. Exactly. <laughs> it takes you know, this. It's the dark and the light. Um, this, I also got here in the chat room um, another email address if you want more information about an upcoming seminar with Prism. You can write to Scorpio. There we nine two six zero zero at yahoo dot com. Scorpio ninety two six hundred at yahoo dot com, and his name is Chris. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> and yeah. I have a hello for you from um, Minia. Oh, there's Minia. Yeah. Minia, hello. Bonjour, bonjour. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, so it's very important very important to make decisions that are based in in love, sincerity, understanding, trust, mm-hmm. compassion when you when you are on the tantric path. It is not just about sitting on each other and achieving yeah. an orgasm. As a matter of fact, I'm going to I'm going to talk to the men right now and I'm going to say I don't even want you to uh to express any fluids whatsoever. Yeah. Okay, I want to try to hold back on that. It, it won't work every single time. And don't don't look to yourself for special expression on that level. Just work with it. Work with not expressing a fluidic response. For the women, I'm going to say express as much fluid as you want. Exactly. <laughs> That's the opposite, you know. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Even in in behaviors, we have yeah. opposites between the two genders. Mm-hmm. And remember, men, you are the platform that the Shakti dances upon. Right. You are the Shiva. You are the the, the the movies, you know, the movies perpetuate a different image of a man, you know, oh, just yeah. racing along, and it's just totally opposite. <laughs> it's totally opposite. And, you know, that's okay. That's okay, because for those who are really interested in, in walking the path, uh, they will they will seek the further information and be able to get the you know the the authentic teaching. Uh-huh. Um, you know with 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 tantra, you know you're playing with some some very strong energies, and so you really want to take yourself out of the patriarchal attitude of societies in the West. Okay, it is not all about the man being in charge and the man deciding this and the man deciding that. It is about the man and the woman being in charge. Equal partners, hand in hand, walking up the mountain. It is not matriarchal or patriarchal. It is man and woman equally, 50-50, the whole way. And that kind of balance the kind of balance that one really needs to to progress towards. doesn't yeah. happen immediately. Yeah, if I could just add, you were mentioning about uh, the men, you know, not ejaculating or not uh, emitting any body fluids. I try not to say that word, Ron, but thank you for saying it. <laughs> <laughs> it's permitted. <laughs> it's on the radio. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like uh, with Tantra, with conventional sexual activity, the man enters hard and exits soft. And with Tantra, it's usually the other way around. He enters soft and exits hard. You know, it, it, it's, it's just the reverse. 
Yeah, yeah. So so there you have it. You know, <laughs> that is a beginning, but just as important as the position and the the attitude of of organs expressing or not are, you know, in the in, uh, with tantra the emotions, the mental attitude, the devotional yeah. attitude, mm-hmm. the the ego surrender must occur. That is as important as any sexual position or any kind of sexual expression along the tantric path. They yeah. are just as important, if not more so, along the path. You know, the 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 ambition is to extend the ecstatic state. So you know you're not in a race to get it over with. You That's want right. you want to extend the experience and. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Make it last as long as you can, and while you're doing it, both partners, eyes up, tongue up, unless the tongue is doing other things, fingers locked. You know, uh, remember the kundalini aspect of this. The Tantra is about preparing for the Kundalini to emerge. It is not about having great sex. And Although that is part of it. That happens. That occurs. That is it you know, it, it is occur. It does occur, but uh Kundalini is the main target. It is the main goal, it is the reason reason why you are even doing it. Whether yeah. you know that or not. And and be forewarned that when the kundalini awakes it may uncover some blockages in your heart you may start crying uncontrollably or that's right that's uh, right some things may occur depending on uh, your past or, or laughing you might start laughing right in the middle of of, of uh, <laughs> the act yeah but and the la- you know, if the la- that happens one person you're not being laughed at Okay. No, the laugh is a laugh of joy. It's not a. It's, exactly not a right. it's the laugh of joy, you know. And that's happened to me before as I walk this path. And I, just, you know, she kind of looks at you and just goes, "What did I do? It was funny." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You gotta say, "Wait a minute! No, no, no." <laughs> so you have to be very understanding. It, it, it's a really great path. <laughs> It really is. It's very joyful. It's uh, very, very, very fruitful. It will give you experience. It will give you phenomena. And the phenomena can be mind-blowing sometimes. Well, oh, oh, here's one thing I do want to mention. Okay, If you're doing Reiki, if you're doing any kind of a... Um, uh, of a modality of healing or mm-hmm. or uh, spiritual search that requires the use of entities. Stop that before you do Tantra. No. Tantra is going to attract a lot of, you know, uh, unfortunate. You know, they're going to they're going to feed off of the sexual energy of the two people for a certain amount of time, and until those people can learn how to kind of flick them away like the mosquitoes they are. And I don't want you to, I, I don't want a person to become enamored of, of these types of phenomena, these types of entities that come along and begin to harvest <laughs> a person's energy. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Sure. They're called succubi and incubi, and, and uh, they're irritating. They're irritating. They'll come to you in your dreams. They have really strange eyes. Uh, they're really kind of disgusting. Put it lightly, um, and they they do not serve a real good purpose. I mean, there is goodness that can be learned from interaction with them, as there's always a good and a bad to be learned from any situation. But uh, I'm just giving you a heads up with this. You'll feel like you're being sat upon at night. You'll wake up. You'll feel paralyzed. You'll feel someone sitting on your genitals. Mm-hmm. You know, you'll learn. You'll learn, but if you, if you do have that occur, you do want some help through that, uh, give me an email at kfireforall at yahoo.com, and, and I will help you as best I can. Or a Kundalini Awakening teacher at MySpace. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also have a Facebook address. It's Chrisum Kundalini. 
And I don't know, do, do they say at Facebook.com? I don't know how that works. Um, I'm still trying to learn how to drive Facebook. Yeah, me too. <laughs> it's, it's, everything's really different there. But it, it, it is. We do, you know, so there's a Facebook address, there's a MySpace mm -hmm. address, there's a Yahoo address. And, and, and your website. And the website, Kundalini Awakening Systems and the number one dot com. And uh, that has a lot of uh, some of what I write and what other people write. And uh, mm -hmm. it's got some good information about how to to begin to understand a Kundalini experience. Certainly not every aspect, as there are so many of them. But I'm working at it. I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> I've got some articles there. <laughs> It's a lot of work. <laughs> it, it does. It does. It does. Yeah. So, uh, do we have any callers or anybody asking questions? Um, let's see. I think Minnie. Yeah. Okay. To ask a question. She. Um, hello. Hello. Hi. This is Hi. Um, Hi. Hey. How are you? <laughs> Hello, Prism. Hi, is this Minya? Yeah, I. <laughs> it wasn't expected. I I don't have any question actually. Oh. I was just calling to hear you guys yeah. after the show, yeah. But um, since I'm here, I'm wondering, uh, how how um, how does it work when uh, how do you receive a teaching from? Uh, from your teacher with a couple, how, how does things work? Well, the, typically the, it's the, cup, the couple must come to the teacher as, as, a, as a single unit. I mean, they, they, they must have been able to discern, you know, beyond the passion, you know, beyond the passion of, of first meeting, they must discern that they do want to walk a tantric path. They do, they understand, uh, as much as they can, the ramifications of Kundalini. They, so they understand the beginning and the ending, so so to speak, of the path. And uh, then they both come to the teacher, and they both ask questions of the teacher. And and from that information that is given, they actively practice the the teachings that are given. And they, you know, and once again, you know, they're not doing it out of a level of passion. Although there's always going to be a level of passion for a couple, but they're mm -hmm. also doing it out of spiritual devotion for the path that they want to walk. So in a way, the first mm -hmm. uh, intertwinings of passionate embrace need to be accomplished before they can come to a teacher. Uh, for spiritual guidance along a tantric path, in my opinion, uh, there are a lot of people teaching tantra out there, and so you know, my opinion is just one drop in the ocean. One drop in the ocean. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, Thank you. So, so you and a partner would, you know, would come to the teacher, and and, and you would begin the process of dedication towards the tantric path. Both you and the partner. It wouldn't just be one or the other. And and uh, you would be and the dedication, the ceremonial dedication towards mm -hmm. the path to Tantra. So um we, we we will both have to surrender to the teacher. Correct. And of course to Kundalini, but to Correct. the teacher first, yeah? Well the so information the teacher gives. Yeah. Also, I, I would like to say that um, Tantra is not um, a weekend project or, you know, a seminar here and there, but Tantra is actually a process of unfolding. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. therefore, you have to, you know, you, you continue it. And um, it, it takes diligence and patience, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it, you can almost immediately um, feel you know, feel the rewards of the practice. So it's mm -hmm. just really being diligent and just remembering that it is a process and don't get impatient. And, um, mm -hmm. You know, and, and discern, discern for yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, honestly, authentically, where each mm -hmm. partner stands in regards to spiritual evolution via 
the Tantra. Mm-hmm. You know, don't just lean mm-hmm. into it because, you know, it sounds like a fun way to get to enlightenment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Even though it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure it is. But like Susan says, you know, everything becomes so enhanced, whether it is um, good or bad, everything is enhanced. So, you know, you really um, need to be prepared for it and at least have an understanding of it so that you don't freak out, <laughs> you know? Yes, absolutely. You yeah. Know, and, and you, you've so, understood enough that you're not going to turn your back on it when the going gets a little tough. Because as we surrender, as the emotions come up, as Ron mentioned, as the, as the blockages occur, and they will, you know, mm-hmm. you need to be mm-hmm. able to work through them with each other, yeah. honestly, authentically, and with clarity. Mm-hmm. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. It's the path of the Vira, the warrior. It takes the stance of a warrior um, to be able to face your own inner demons and whatever comes on the surface, whatever surfaces up from your, you know, from you. Yeah. Um, but it's all it's, it's all doable, and it's um, it, it's worth it. It's well worth it. Oh, easily, easily worth yep. it. I know that that Minya, you are. Are you still there, Minya? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. I'm listening. What ears wide open? <laughs> you are. I know that you're on the Kundalini path. Yes. Yeah. I, I know that you're there, and I know that you're having phenomena, and I know mm-hmm. that uh, I that that you are having this occur. I do not know that he is having this occur. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, in a way, it's kind of like what Ron mentioned a little while ago, that, you know, a person being a little bit ahead of another person. If that yeah. occurs in the, in the area... Or uh, not, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If that occurs in the area of surrender, well, then you're going to have some surrender issues to work on. Uh, and these are personal mm-hmm. issues. You cannot make up the mind of the other person. They have to come to it oh. in their own yes. authentic way. Oh, yeah. I absolutely agree. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So, so, yeah. Wow. So, um, what a beautiful thing if we find somebody who has come to us on this authentic path, huh? Well, yeah, I mean... <laughs> uh, we'll say you, you, you've met somebody and, and uh, you've had some conversations and you've had some, some passionate experiences and, uh, and you've mm-hmm. come to the conclusion outside of the passion that this is something mm-hmm. that the, the Tantra would be something we want to do. Not just you, mm-hmm. not just him, but something we want to do. In a way, yeah. it's a sacred marriage. Mm-hmm. Well, look at it that way. Look at it yes. as a sacred marriage that doesn't require a ring. Yep. And, uh, and, and as you look at it that way, you can kind of get the, the feeling and the discernment that comes with, with looking at it in, in such a profound way. Because mm-hmm. it's, sh- it's a sacred mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I... Uh, if I could just add, uh, if you do get to a blockage where one person, one party wants to go on and the other is totally stuck in their ego and doesn't want to move from there, then mm-hmm. you, you have to you have to decide. Uh, you may you have to you may have to find another relationship if uh, you want to continue that. Otherwise, uh, you won't make any progress or much progress with one person. You, yeah, you may yeah. have. To you may have to change. I mean, people are different. We all come into it with different expressions, different karma, different uh, levels of of uh, the ability to surrender. So you know, not everybody's compatible. Well, passions and and uh, and love are are needed in that case. Yes. Yes. Patience. Yes. Patience. Patience. Love. Yes. Patience. Not your well. Passion too. But <laughs> patience <Passionate>. and. <laughs> yeah. If if their passion matches yours, you know, as far as um, uh, their goal for um, 
spiritual spiritual enlightenment. Um, mm-hmm. it, 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 it's very, um, you know, I, I would recommend that very highly that at least the person has some knowledge or capacity to understand and to, um, you know, to be attentive to their spiritual lives. Yes, absolutely. So, so some, some uh, maybe some in-depth personal conversations that that mm-hmm. uh, that deal with some of the you know the subjects brought up, Minya, would be helpful for you and your potential partner. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll Thank like you, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy. (laughs) We need to devise, Prism, a a questionnaire. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you you, you need, you need, yeah. (laughs) We need to do that, yes? Uh, Do what? Have Uh, a questionnaire, a special questionnaire? Potential lovers, you must fill this out first. <laughs> well, oh, you know, yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, you know, it would be good, really. I mean, if you're going to walk the tantric path and you're going to walk it with any 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 level of, of consciousness towards enlightenment, mm-hmm. then, yeah, you know, I mean, some questions about surrender, you know. Are you willing to yes. surrender everything that you are right now to everything that you can become after you're on the path? The first part is much more difficult than it sounds. The second yeah. part is easy. It just comes down to a willingness. Yeah. Uh, That's op- right. A willingness to be open to this unfolding that will occur. And if you're not open and willing, then you're not going to make any progress. Right. So so you, you you're open and willing to surrender... Mm-hmm. and modify your behaviors based upon that surrender. You know, you change mm-hmm. your behaviors. Yeah. You change your behaviors towards your loved ones. From, uh, you know, if you've been married 10 years or whatever, then from mundane, uh, okay, been there, done that type of a, of a, of a thought process to this woman or this man that I am with is the representation of the divine male or female for me. Mm -hmm. And I am going to exalt this person, I'm going to honor this person, and I'm going to surrender my ego to the path that we are both on. Mm -hmm. Making that choice, making that choice is so very important. And yes, the sex will be great, and there's all kinds of sex (laughs) techniques that one can explore. (laughs) But uh, unless you, you you are making the decisions in the other areas of the expressive body, the spiritual, the mental, the emotional, the surrendering of the ego, then the the one body is you know it's going to be a fly by night decision. One and that a person will accrue karma from. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, it is as well to take responsibilities uh, with the karma of the other as well, yes? What's that? Re- repeat that. Um, is it also to take responsibility uh, with the karma? Karma? You can't, to, from, from you one take, to you each can't other. take on another person's karma. Okay. They, what they've yeah. done, they've earned, and what they've earned, they will have to balance. Mm-hmm. Now, the karma that the two of you develop together, well... Okay, then you you do have a uh, you do have a stake in that karma. But once again, okay. it is karma that you have made with that other mm-hmm. person. So you will balance the karma you've made with that other person, and that other person will balance the karma that they have made with you. Karma is okay. there for soul development. It okay. it refines and defines the soul of a person as they continue through incarnation. And yeah. you are responsible for your karma, for your thoughts, for your actions, for your behaviors towards yourself and other people. So it will be taking only responsibility to um, 
just to be with the other. That's just the well, choice of to, the other. To authentically and honestly be with that other yeah. person is and a much love. more intense process yeah. than the mere words would suggest. Mm -hmm. To look into the eyes. You've heard of uh, the Tantra stare or the Tantra... Mm -hmm. You've heard of that, Shandi Ram, the, uh, the oh, yeah. tantric <laughs> eye. The, right. The, the visual cortex of a human being has the capacity for transmission. And as a person stares or looks at another person in a certain way, a tantric response can be given. Okay? Mm -hmm. And with the two people on a tantric path, I would suggest as much as possible that as a person that, that you always look into the other person's pupil with love, mm -hmm. with honesty and mm -hmm. and uh, authenticity, which is mm -hmm. honesty. Look into the eyes deeply of, of your intended, of your beloved, and have them mm -hmm. return that look. Return that gaze. And well, yeah, you're you're look, you're you're looking into the other person's soul, right? And uh, with the right look and the right intention, then you'll see the the soul of the other person. It's kind of a it's a visual tantra. Once again, tantra is not just about the generative organs. Uh, it's about the heart, it's about the eyes, mm -hmm. it's about the nose, it's about the ears, it's about the senses of the body and the exalted senses of the body. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the intuitive sense and the mm -hmm. psychic sense. Uh, you know, you can go out of body together and you can experience the astral uh, experience with each other. There are so many many, many formats of Tantra that are available for people to discover and to partake of. But most of them, uh, most, in my opinion, most of the authentic ones mm -hmm. require a, a, a in-depth sense of honesty and surrender and love and respect yes. and mm -hmm. compassion and passion and you know, all of these things mixed together. And it's not that hard. It may sound, you know, I'm, I'm you know, quoting all these, these qualities. And these qualities, most people are very familiar with. And it's, the, as Ram says, it's the will to express those qualities on purpose, consistently, mm -hmm. daily, mm -hmm. that makes up a practice. Mm -hmm. So stare at that person, my dear. Right. Mm -hmm. um, during this event that um, um, Krishna and um, Eileen are planning, um, it, it would be a two-day event, and you would be covering some of this, you think? Oh, absolutely. It would be a good thing to do, yeah. Sure, sure. And, and uh, I would welcome your input and your presence there as well, Sean. Yes. I would love to be there. Because you live in, I mean, it might be kind I, of a I, long flight for Rom. I'd, I'd welcome Rom there as well. Are, are you up to a long plane flight, Rom? <laughs> Is he still oh, there? I think we lost him. Oh, I think no. we lost him. He was yeah. breaking up a little bit. Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, but, but that would be a <laughs> nice thing to do because, you know, there, there are, like, um, exercises and certain things to... Um, you know. Well, the first the first day is pretty much dedicated to talking about the Kundalini and what mm -hmm. what can happen, what does happen, what uh, a person can expect, what you know, how is it awakened, and when it is awakened, what occurs, and how do you live with this, and how do you have yeah. have a job and drive a car and raise kids and go to school or. You know all of the all of the attributes of Western life, and, and how mm -hmm. do you have this and the Kundalini at the same time, and and uh, how is this all balanced? And we we go through that on the first day, and the second day for those who desire it, 
we will initiate Shaktipat, which is a oh, triggering yeah. of their Kundalini mm-hmm. uh, by me. I, I, that'd be wonderful. And, and I think we just lost um, Minia as well. Well, I, mean, I guess we're on with for, streaming, so. Yeah, we're we're on the the uh, extended recorded session, right? Yeah. I didn't hear the blog talk radio uh, announcement, but. Oh, when it ends, I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure if it does that when it ends. Oh. Maybe okay. it does. Well, I, I, I thought can't it remember. did. <laughs> but okay. uh, so so tantra is a viable path if it is walked with discretion and openness and surrender and honesty. Mm-hmm. And I mean honesty beyond the commercial, driven, television, yeah. Hollywood, magazine, newspaper, <laughs> radio uh, examples of what we are expected to have within the sexual expression of our lives. Right. It is not about the latest fashion, the latest shoe style. Mm-hmm. It is not about how much cleavage a person can show. It is not about right. how ripped a person is or yeah. or uh, how powerful or how much money they have. It is mm-hmm. not about being owned and operated by another person. It is not about being dominated by a teacher. It is about being authentic and honest with yourself and walking the path of that authenticity mm-hmm. and on- honesty yeah. in the Tantra uh, modality. And, and that takes mindfulness, um, you know, to be genuine because, uh, like Ram was saying, you have to be naked to the soul, you know. Right, and you have to be comfortable and, with that. I mean, exactly. We're, we're all born naked. Right. And we all go to the Creator naked mm-hmm. when we die. Right. So yeah. it's only the ego that has been trained to have a problem with being naked. Right. Okay, and so the ego needs to have some behavioral modification (laughs) for it. And and this is, you know, this is what I teach as far as Kundalini goes too. Even doing the safeties, Mm -hmm. you are initiating behavioral modifications upon the ego. You are Mm -hmm. retraining the ego. I never say to uh, students to kill the ego. Never Uh say that. I always say that you need to retrain the ego. Retrain it. Retrain it and allow it to become harmonious with the path that you're walking upon. Mm -hmm. And the ego will. The ego is like a 12-year-old. It will come into line. It will. It will come into harmony with the path of Tantra and the the path of Kundalini. Exactly. Um, Minya says that that she was disconnected. (laughs) I guess it bounced her off. Sorry, Minya. Yeah. But I think, I think you got the point. I think you got the point, and, and I thank you for, for calling up. Where is she from? She's uh, Paris, France. Oh, she's calling. she was calling from France? I think she was oh my God. Skype or something like that, so I hope. Wow. Oh, okay. I hope. Well, thank you, Mia. Yeah, yeah. She's a great, great person. Um, wow. So... Uh, as far as the uh, the entities feeding on people, you know, this is not something that you need to go into abject fear of. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it can be frightening because it does happen a lot when a, when people are alone and one, you know, if, if, if two two people are sleeping side by side, one only one may become conscious of it, and so that can be a scary thing. And uh, mm-hmm. if you hear your partner say, "Hey," You know, I saw this thing last night, da 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 da. Don't laugh at them. Uh-huh. They probably did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh these these things are no worse off than any kind of a mosquito or gnat that that will land on you and, and, and take a little bit of blood and move on. Okay. It's just it's just a, a, a spiritual form of that very same issue. And uh, no more than you would paint yourself in blood and go out and walk in the jungle for all the mosquitoes to feed upon. Uh, you know, don't paint yourself in sexual energy and not expect to have the same thing occur. And uh, there are certain prayers and invocations a person can make, and as they make them with authenticity and honesty and, and not out of fear or, or uh, yeah. you, know, you know, fear. 
then these invocations and, and these prayers will be very effective towards that type of a scenario. As far as phenomena goes with your feet and your legs and your arms disappearing, this is <laughs> common. It doesn't happen for everybody, but it is one of the more, you know, uh, visually, uh, mm-hmm. and especially with Tantra. It seems to be more associated with Tantra. So uh, a tantric awakening can have that occur. And so once again, don't panic. You haven't lost anything. Just shake the arm, the leg, the hand, whatever. And if you have a partner where, that, where that's happening, just tell them what to do. Put the tongue to the roof of the mouth. That will often solve any of those issues. Okay. Going out of phase is not a bad thing. It's just a, a phenomena of kundalini awakening. Uh, hearing monks chanting hearing mm-hmm. waterfalls, hearing uh, the sounds of a gong or celestial music where you have <laughs> yes. many voices singing, or uh, the floating balls of light that come to you and just kind of float across your visual field. These are all phenomena. Uh-huh. Uh, so don't worry about the phenomena that comes. Don't be afraid. Be, be okay with it. This is right. the new land. This yeah. is the land beyond... Mere physical. You know, I, I, huh? I'm just saying. Now a person walks in two worlds. <laughs> yeah, I, I experienced, um, you know, heart palpitations. Not even palpitations, just big booms in, in my heart region. Oh yeah. And um, I, you know, I thought I, I, I mean, I was at first. Thought you had a heart. You thought you had a cardiac. I, I did. I, just yeah. to be safe, I went to the doctor and I had okay. all these exams taken. That's right. And um, you know, the, the whole I did, nine yards. <laughs> I did the same thing with my kidneys. When the the kidneys will expand, the kidneys will expand oh. to the point where they're protruding out of the skin, and you. Can oh my them. gosh! And you're going, oh my gosh! I'm going <laughs> to die now. My kidneys are all screwed up. This. This kundalini yeah. screwed up my kidneys. Oh my gosh, I'm going to die. I better go to the doctor. Uh-huh. So you go to the doctor and you you spend two thousand dollars. <laughs> exactly. And they're going up. Oh, nothing wrong with your kidneys. Nothing wrong. <laughs> yeah, it, it's kind of. I know it's like I just kind of uh, you know. Oh really? Okay. And I'm thinking, oh my god, it's not a heart attack. It's a heart chakra. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You know, and, and, and the same thing with the the throat. The throat can, can get real scratchy and, mm-hmm. and sore, and you can feel like your neck is expanding and your abdomen. Oh my expands. God, the neck pain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then a, the bulge at, in between the eyes and the bridge of the nose. The third eye feels like it's a bump that's coming from the inside out. Yeah, and, you uh, know, it's true. Um, I think even your look, looks can change. Oh yeah. Absolutely. You know, and then, of course, you're going into spontaneous mudras and you're going into yoga positions that you never knew of before, which mm-hmm. is where they get kundalini yoga from. It's a kundalini yoga is just taking kriyas yeah. or, or spontaneous kundalini-induced yoga positions yes. and formula, you know, putting them into a format of, of, uh, of yoga. Mm-hmm. doesn't necessarily awaken the, the kundalini, but, you know, it doesn't hurt. And, uh, you know, people have made a path out of that, and that's fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the, lots of phenomena occur with kundalini. I mean, walk into a forest at night, and you'll want to, by the way. You'll mm-hmm. want to walk into a forest or natural settings all the time, barefoot, sometimes in the nude. Mm-hmm. You'll feel that compulsion. And, and if you can do it safely without being seen by other people, <laughs> fine. But if there's any chance... Especially if you're a female, if you're any chance that that you're going to be discovered, don't do it. Just That's go right. barefoot. Just go <laughs> barefoot. We don't live in a world that is safe for that to occur. Right. Okay, but if you're out in the middle of nowhere, Death Valley, you know, <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, if you can drive out in the middle of nowhere. Take off your clothes and be natural in the natural environment. That's fine. Kundalini does really respond well to that, but only if you are not going to be spied upon or seen by other people. Right. You have to use the vector, so discrimination. You have to be discerning. Um, yes. Exactly. Definitely. Um, you know, Always. There's that. 
Uh, swimming in the ocean or wading in the ocean is also a very good experience. Walking on the sand barefoot, feeling mm-hmm. the surf, the sea, the air, the sun. Uh, that's you know, that now. exactly. That, that's what I got from sailing, that I felt so connected to all of all of the elements were all all working together so harmoniously right. that it, it really struck me. I thought, oh, this is just magnificent. I mean, you know, with the breeze and, that, and, and you know, water. That all the time. You'll feel that feeling come over and wash <laughs> over. And, and yeah. And continue your practice within the Kundalini awakening. You're not stopping. Mm-hmm. You know, your your Kundalini is kind of the handoff. You know. Yeah. And, and your practice continues and it alters and the kundalini begins to take more control of how you eat and how you sleep and whether or not you pray, whether or not you meditate, whether or not mm-hmm. you have sex. All of these functions sure. begin, become dominated by the kundalini because it is there to propel you forward. Yeah. It's really, it's, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful situation. It is. So, so, well... <laughs> Yes. So you will be with us uh, every month on the second Wednesday of every month. I'm honored. I'm honored. That, oh, thank we you. are. And, and thank you for those articles. They're wonderful. I mean, I really uh, love them. And cities, for those who are not familiar with the Sanskrit word, are exalted skills that the Kundalini yes. can bring. Telepathy, telekinesis. Oh, yes. Those are cities. Mm-hmm. S I D D H I S, I believe. Not yes, and you can read about it on uh, karmacafe. dot com, C A F F E cafe, and um, about every two weeks we we are uh, rotating um, Chrism's article, so that we get a more a very thorough, a very rounded uh, perspective of a spiritual life. Well, well, my it, thanks to to you, Shandi and Ron. And uh, Eileen and Chris and Anna and everybody who's who's uh, behind getting this information out. It's, uh, I'm, uh, yes, I'm really looking forward to the um, uh, workshop or the event in in this area here. Yeah, Los Angeles should be fun. Yeah, that's going to be really great. That'll be a first. So yes, so they can, I should give out her email address again. It's E O R O. Five five at yahoo dot com. Right and Scorpio ninety two six hundred at yahoo dot com. Yes. <laughs> and also you can just check on Karma Cafe. As soon as we get more details, we'll post it right up there on the main page. Oh, very good. So yes, yeah, so everyone can see it and you know start signing up. It's going to be a, a really um, life changing event. And I, yes, I really it, it recommend it can be for people. And I got to warn you, um, yeah. I've had people come to these events, and they have, you know, they've listened and they've participated, they've been mm-hmm. given shakti pot, but they haven't quite been ready. And uh-huh. you know, they get red welts going up their spine. Uh-huh. And I have to turn it down for them. Yeah. So wow. <laughs> be aware of what can occur. Uh huh. And actually, they could start doing some preparatory work. Right now. That's right. Right, right prior to the safety protocols. Mm-hmm. Great. And they can find us on your website, Kundalini That's Awakening right. System. Systems and the number one. Dot number one dot com. Okay. That sounds wonderful. I know it's a long thing, but, I, you know, when I was making the website, I, you know, the domain names were all taken, so I had to uh-huh. split it up. My apologies. <laughs> Everyone. Oh no, it's it's well worth it. <laughs> well, well, thank you for the opportunity to uh, to have this interview and and to to uh, you know for your whole Karma Cafe thing and the book that you've written, you and Ram and and uh, you know it's a great service to many many people. So thank you both for that. Oh, thank you so much, and thank you everybody for joining us, and we'll see you all next week, um, same time. 2 o'clock Pacific Standard Time on Wednesday. And our guest is uh, George Catlin, and he's from theteachings.org. I also want to mention the Ho'oponopono event coming up this weekend in Los Angeles. 
And that can be found also on the main page of um, karmacafe.com. You can also read that book review um, on From Ohm to Orgasm, and that's on the main page. And, and Chris's article is on the main page. <laughs> so go to, go there and um, <laughs> enjoy all of that. And I'll talk to you, see you all again next week. And thank you, Chrism. Thank you, Shandi. Thank you, okay. everyone. Namaste. Namaste.